All right, we are live from our first ever road video podcast. We are coming to you from Baltimore, Maryland. And a super special thanks to Digital Impact Studios. If you guys are from the Baltimore area, it locally, you're, you're heading through town to do a podcast, a show, you're into music. Dude, you need to stop by and check this place out. It is unbelievable. But first, we have a local sponsor, Precision Properties, LLC, North Central West Virginia's number one landscape, snowplow, and power wash. Call Elmo Trickett. This guy will get whatever you need done. Off it. Excited today, man. Doing something a little different. Not sports today. What we normally do, we have a true rags to riches story, if I can say so. Um, excited to have the 2011 America's Got Talent winner, Lando Eugene Murphy Jr. on the show today. What's good? <laughs> Hey, so we, we always like to start out, man, and just uh, let everybody know what you're doing now. You know, everyone follows a career, but let us know where you're at, what you're doing, and uh, what's coming up for you. Uh, I'm just still, you know, 10 years in, still traveling the world, doing shows, selling out places here and there. Uh, on my way to Dubai, actually, in like two weeks. Wow. Well, I got this thing coming up in New York uh, this Saturday, and then, like, after that, it's straight to Dubai. Wow. You were so just in we, West Virginia, right? You were at the Greenbrier? Yeah, I had a residency at the Greenbrier, and that's, you know, I wrapped that up uh, maybe two weeks ago, last Saturday. Um, and everything's great, man. I'm still getting it. Still, oh, you know, living my dream, just doing what I love to do, traveling the world. Absolutely. So, yeah. so uh, before we get rolling into questions, we have a video we want to play from America's Got Talent. I'm sure you've seen it a thousand times like everyone uh, else, but you nah, lived it. <laughs> I don't really watch it, man. It, well, we're about to watch it again. Yeah. <laughs> we got it queued up. We're going to watch a little bit of it because we want to ask you some questions. So about many it. questions about this. Yeah, absolutely. I just, I don't. Go ahead. Why are you laughing at Howie? I love Howie. I love you, dude. Oh, well, thank you. That's very... <laughs> that's very this nice. little Bobby. My name is Bobby. <laughs> <That's> pretty good. <laughs> <laughs> All right, then. Uh, what's your name? My name is Landau Eugene Murphy, Jr. Landau, are you chewing gum? Yes, I am. I, I wouldn't do that when you're performing in this show. Seriously. <laughs> thank you. That's better. Where are you from, Landau? I'm from Logan, West Virginia. Okay. Yes. And what are you going to do for us today? Well, I do all kind of music, but tonight I'm just trying to follow my dream. <laughs> and what do you do for a living? Uh, I was recently washing cars out of my new car detailer. All right. Well, good luck. Thank you. Anything come what might for the sake of having All right, so how you feeling about that? You know, you're kind of covering your face a little bit, almost like you haven't watched that in years. I don't, I don't watch it, man. I, I understand. All right, so, dude, I, you walk onto that stage and you have confidence that I don't think big time stars have. Like, you walk out there, you're making a joke with Howie. You're already playing into the crowd. You don't care that you, you got gum in your mouth. She corrects you. She's like, hey, take your gum out or, you know, whatever. And you're just like, all right, whatever. And then you kill this thing. Can you take me through that moment of or, or, or what the confidence came from or, or, or what was going on? Walk us through. Walk us out on stage with you. Let us know what's going on in your head. Well, first of all, the confidence came from a uh... – Actually, just performing in West Virginia. I had a blue soul band before I went on America's Got Talent. You know, so you called, knew you were good. Called Top Shelf, yeah. Like over the course of my life, people have always told me that I was good. I had to just go out and, and do it. At this point in my at that point in my life, going on America's Got Talent was, you know, it was all or nothing. Yeah. But it's just like my whole life, you know, I've always been the, the great dancer or the the comedian or the singer or, or whatever, the, the greatest artist or 
whatever was around me, that's what I was good at, basketball, everything. But, you know, a lot of people always told me that I was great to do, that I should be on TV or I should be, you know, on the basketball court in the NBA or something like that. It was <laughs> all those things in my life. Yeah. But at that moment, going to America Got Talent, what made me go there is that um, I was just at the end of my rope. I was I was 35 at the time or, yeah, 35 years old. And I had been working for, like, Jack Whitaker. I was making $33 an hour. But I was also, like, when I once I got laid off from that, I started, like, washing cars again. Right. You know what I'm saying? So, but while I was doing that, I had this blue soul band this blue soul band called Top Shelf that I would travel around West Virginia doing shows with. And I was the front man and, and we sung nothing but blues and soul music, you know, uh, hold on, I, I'm coming. You know, all that, <laughs> all those screaming Wilson Pickett songs and all of that stuff, you know, and it was all blues and soul. Uh, we did uh, Bobby Blue, Ben Lynn, um B.B. King, just all of that stuff, man. Yeah. And so it's just like, once I actually found out that I could actually do this for a living, it was it was a while ago. Like earlier in my life, it was maybe as a little kid. I was I would do it on basketball courts and on playgrounds and things like that. When you know when bullies was trying to like mess with me over a foul call, if I, if I dunked on you, I would sing "Fly Me to the Moon." <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I would like actually dunk it because you know I I was born in West Virginia, but my parents split up and then my mom moved me to Detroit. So I had to adapt to a whole new environment. Right. So, so, so music, when you're, music and sports was my way of adapting to it all. So when you're telling us you already knew you could do it, you're going on to the, you know, America's Got Talent. They made the story, you know, he's homeless. He lives in a car. He's washing cars. How much was that just for the story on the show? Or was that, I mean, were you living that life at that time? Cause you're telling me you had, you know, you had your own band at that time, and no, here's the thing: those was all parts of my life that they just put together to create that story. Right. That's the way I look at it, because yeah. all of it was true. It was just they put like that I was homeless and then washing cars and then went on America's Got Talent. That's not how it went. <laughs> right. That's I mean that's what we thought watching it. Like yeah, yeah. That's 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 what kind of like upset me about it. But hey, it was it was it was good for. Uh, for whatever they used it for, and it changed my life forever. Right, TV. So I guess you can't be that mad. At You're the right. End you right. You yeah. So when did nerves? So we're kind of going into the nervous kind of situation. You were did whatever to bullies and on basketball courts. When did nerves not become an issue for you? Because most people normally get nervous to be in front of other people speaking, singing, whatever. All oh, the nerves are always there. Once you lose that, you become jaded. I mean, you basically unhuman at that point. When so you still paid. you still had butterflies then. Yeah, I butterflies before I started this is the whole Zoom. <laughs> like, <laughs> you know, hey, so but it's just yeah, you can't you can't really. I kind of turn that into power. Yeah, like because I like I said, I've been people tried to bully me and everything, but I was the type that caught the bully by itself. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, absolutely. And even in life, I did those to situations. Like if a situation made me uncomfortable, I would flip it to make it happier. Is that like, why? Is that why when you walked out, you went you went to Howie first? Uh, that, yeah, it was it was like I mean, just a nervous bully, right? reaction. It was just like, okay, man, I don't know what I'm gonna say when I walk out here, but here I go. I go out on the stage. You know, I wasn't even supposed to start chewing that gun. <laughs> gun is a whole nother thing, bro. <laughs> like I'm telling you. You stuck it straight in your pocket too. <laughs> right. I wasn't even supposed to start chewing it. Like I walked out there and then I, I just, as soon as I looked at Howie Mandel, he smiled at me. And I was like, yo, Howie, I remember you, bro. I remember you, you know, from Fraggle Rock. And I mean, it's a whole lot of other stuff that I had said. But I know TV is like edited. So that's what I'm going to ask you. How much did we see of what actually went on? When you're oh, on man, stage I, was on stage, and... I was on stage for like 45 minutes. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah. Anything, anything you wish they would have put on that they cut out? Huh? Anything they cut out that you, they, you're you like, man, I wish they'd have put that part on. Uh, Yeah, basically how I described how I was going to do the whole audition. Like my whole thing, I went in on those Dooney tunes. And my nickname is Dooney, and I do all music. Like I don't just do Frank Sinatra. 
Right. Do hip hop, rap, gospel, soul, blues, R and B, rock, everything. So was I that do. their idea to twist you straight to Sinatra? Yeah, because once they heard me sing Sinatra, they was like, "Man, that's just amazing." I mean, because here you got to realize when you go on those shows, these people have seen everything. Right. But what uh, had what hadn't they seen yet? They hadn't they seen the all skinny black guy with dreadlocks, <laughs> six <laughs> foot four, singing Frank Sinatra. That's just gonna blow your mind. It's just like what? So if you, you know, came on and sang like hip hop, what song? What song would you have picked? I mean, if it was hip hop, it would have to be something that I did myself. You don't like seeing other people's hip hop songs. <laughs> let me let me let me hear something. You got something right now to go? Uh, from me? Yeah, from yeah. you. Yeah, we want to hear from you. Oh man, I I mean, y'all have y'all ever heard "Baby I'm a Star"? Let's nah, hear it. Right, let's, let's hear it right now. You never heard that? No. Like the West Frank. Virginia anthem, bro. Let's hear it. Well, my lyrics go like this. I hit the stage, I'm going crazy. Cameras flash, I'm going blind. I shake it off. Kill the show, hope you're getting yours because I'm getting mine. I was made for this. Music balling, check the phone, that's the money calling. I'm speeding it up so it's never stalling. And the mountain is keeping me from falling. Oh, I love the feeling because I ain't never been rich. Three or four been pulling for me, so I'll never leave them out this. Y'all know what it is, so watch your boy handle biz and do what I'm supposed to do. Take care of fam and do it big. <laughs> I got you. I'm about to check the whole song. Wow. Right now. Yeah, yeah that that's good, man. And, and then I sung the whole, I sung the whole hook, the background vocals on it, and everything. And the song is, "Baby, I'm a star, baby, I'm a star, baby, I'm a star, baby, I'm a star." Yeah, it's it's crazy, man. How much <laughs> when you when you perform now? How much do you get to do your own stuff like that, or does everybody want to see the guy that sang Frank Sinatra? Do, I don't get to do that, man. When I'm doing shows and concerts, it's all Frank Sinatra or like Motown and stuff like that. But in between songs, I tell a lot of stories. So I tell them how I got involved with Frank Sinatra or what I do when I ain't listening to Frank Sinatra or sing Frank Sinatra. Right. So I bust out gin and juice as if I was Frank Sinatra. <laughs> Wait, you, you, know, got, a, you got a version of gin and juice? Free, smoking in the sipping on gin and juice, way back. I got my mind and my money, money on my mind. With so much drama in Logan County, it's kind of hard to get mad out of G. Murphy. Somehow, way, I keep coming up with these little hits like every single day. I'm rolling down the street, smoking and all, sipping on gin and juice. Where do I buy that ticket yeah. at? I'm trying to come to that show. <laughs> I got to be at that. I love that. You know, and I'll, I'll tell them how much I love hip hop and how much as people of the world, we lost something great in Tupac and Biggie mm. and all this mm. other stuff that's happening in hip hop today. I mean, it's probably what? 600 rappers have been killed oh, within yeah, absolutely. Like two years. Yeah. It's that's crazy. That, that man. life that they're living in. So it, it, now you definitely bring a different side to it to the hip-hop side you grew up in logan west virginia yeah and then, i mean take us through growing up in logan because i don't know if everybody understands i've been to logan matt's drove through logan with me mm -hmm. i've been to the car wash that you were at for sure yeah <laughs> take us through that what was it like growing up in logan man oh it was fun man it was like paradise because all i did was play it in the creeks and in the mountains you know we was building our own little log cabins and everything man it was it was wonderful as a kid you know but like I said, in 1984, my, my mom moved me out of here. And I grew up in Detroit from like 11 to like 26 years old. Mm. So when I came back to West Virginia in like 2099 or 2000, it was just, it was a totally different world. You know, that whole epidemic had hit here. It was like drugs and, and everything. People was trying to be Crips. And it's like, what? Yeah. How you know Crip in Coral Alley? You can't do that. Nobody's a crip again. Gosh, but, it just, me. but it's just things like that. It was just it was just a different world. So when I came back, I just decided to, you know, try to do my best to 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 bring that happiness back. And 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 it was doing music. It was music. I was going to the nursing homes and singing Frank Sinatra songs and right. singing for boys and girls clubs and. Right. Children Home Society, all of these things, the weekend program, the vaudeville shows. I was doing all that, just raising money for people. It was never, you know, me getting paid or anything, but right. 
But that's what whole West Virginia was for me. It was growing up, it was beautiful. It was, oh. I mean, everything to me. I, I never wanted to live anywhere else. And I've traveled all around the world, just like you said earlier. Mm-hmm. There's no place like it. You know, you can go to different places and be like, oh, ah, ah, for like two or three days. And you're like, man, there need to be a mountain right there. <laughs> There's too many buildings right there. This is no air. Can I breathe, please? You know so we talk, we talk before the show, and, and people from West Virginia, for whatever reason, always get drawn back to West Virginia. What was the, what were the things that brought you back, that made you want to come back to Logan? Right, because like you said, you moved to Detroit. Obviously, you have a life there, and then all of a sudden, you want to come back to Matt's point. What makes you want to be back here? No, I just always did. It's where my family, my cousins, and everybody was at, especially when I was a kid. But by the time my mom moved me to Detroit, I'm 11 years old. Now I'm adapting to this whole new environment of violence, good things, plus bad things. You know, it was just, but it, it made me who I am. But always in the back of my mind, I was like, man, I wish my mom would just move back to West Virginia. But we just stayed up there for so long. And then by the time I became a man and and everything, I moved back on my own. I just wanted to be back in West Virginia. Anytime I had to come home for Christmas or funerals or anything, I mean, you cried when you had to leave. Like it was just, yeah. it was just that place that, and then, you know, growing up in the city, you got to look over your shoulder like constantly. Whether you're doing something wrong or not, it doesn't matter. Yeah. It so, was just always, you always looking out for somebody. You know what I mean? And I had to deal with that for 16, 17 years. You're talking about the violence and, and I'm guessing the gangs in Detroit and yeah. How, how did you separate yourself from that? How, how much of a draw was it to you as an 11 year old? You know, everybody knows the, the gang life, the gang stories. How did you keep yeah. yourself from falling into that? I think it was God. It was just God giving me the, you know, the wisdom to look at things for how they really are. I mean, because if you listen to a rap song and then you go out and do what's in the rap song, the rap song already told you that he died. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Why would you go out and do it? Yeah, not very many of these guys singing those songs are doing that. Yeah, but that's how I look at, you know, uh, people on the streets. I'm like, man, I don't want to be like that. Yeah. I knew I didn't want to go bust somebody upside the head unless I was defending myself. I knew that. I so, treat people the way that I want to be treated. So as we're as we're going through this and we're talking car wash, home, and that's and that's our story. From you know, America's Got Talent, like you said, that's not how it was. But I've listened to you talk enough. What was rock bottom? You said you were at the end of the rope, right there. What what pushed you to that point to say, all right, something's got to change? Well, it was just everything, man. Um, after the having a blue soul band, you know, ego start getting involved, and you got like you know six other guys in the group, and everybody wanting this and that. And then one of the guys who actually helped me put the get the band together was actually in federal prison with my little brother. Mm-hmm. And by this time, I'm actually doing my little weekend programs, vaudeville shows, all of those things for the community. But I'm making the front of the newspaper like every other week or at least two or three times a month. And he was collecting the newspaper. And while they were locked up, he asked my little brother, like, who is this on the front of the Logan Banner? Like singing Frank Sinatra and Motown and all this. And he was like, that's my brother, do he? He's like, yeah, right. You don't know him. He was like, yeah, I do, bro. When we get out, I'll introduce you to him. So when Barack Obama came into office, remember they changed the crack law. Yep, right. And so, yeah, a lot of people got out early. So my brother, he actually did like seven and a half years. He's supposed to do eight and a half, I think. But he ended up getting out because of that law. So they all get out. As soon as he comes home, he's like, bro, I got to introduce you to somebody. This guy named Rick Lowe. And I was like, I heard of him. I heard he had a million dollar studio in his house. And he was like, he was like, yeah, that's the guy. He was my cellmate. And I'm like, are you serious? <laughs> he's like, yeah, bro. I was like, let's go. So we go out to this dude's house. He got like a half a mansion in a garage that's half a house. <laughs> that's crazy. <laughs> crazy. And he was like, what all do you sing, man? What do you do? And I was just like, anything. And he was like, well, I want to put a blue soul band together, and I want you to be the front man. And I was like, yeah, right. He was like, yeah, just sing something for me. So I sung like uh, Frank Sinatra. He was like, ah, nobody wants to hear that. <laughs> He's like, Frank's dead. Nobody wants to hear that. And I'm like, what? I was like, 
He's like, I've collected all the papers from you. I know what you do. And he's like, but I really don't want to hear that. And I was like, well, that's what's going on right now. Everybody wants to hear me sing that. But he didn't believe it. All and right, was, let me cut you off. So he's telling you no one cares about that. But then you go on to this TV show and literally win it based off Frank Sinatra songs. You had to have called him after or, or during and be like, bro, look at this. No, he called me. He called me. Everybody <laughs> did. I mean, there were so many people that told me that. Like, I had relatives. Everybody was telling me, man, you better not take your ass on TV and see no friends and no. <laughs> you, have to change this, you have to change your number, change the cell phone number after you I mean, I'm my number like three or four times, my house phone, everything. <laughs> but back to that story is uh, after I did that, after I auditioned for him, we put this blue soul band together. I started, I gave him a year. But the egos in the band, you know, everybody started clashing, except for me. I'm just, I love just singing and performing. But they started what, having. What song? What song did you sing for him after you did Frank Sinatra? You said they want to hear it. What did you end up singing? Uh, it was Countryside of Life. Let's hear it. I'm putting you on the spot on every song, man. Yeah. You and have your buildings, all your heavy arithmetic. I don't need no crowded streets, some city slicker tricks. I just need to be someplace where I can move around. Look down at my toes and I can still see the ground. Give me that countryside of life, place where I can step out right. Give me the countryside of life. Yeah, give me that countryside of life, a place where I can stretch out right. Give me the countryside of life. Yeah, hey, I gotta, I gotta tell you, man, I think America's got talent cheated America from the exactly. real land. Like, Jeez, I'm exactly. Waiting. I'm listening to you sing this stuff, and I, like, we were talking on the way up. I'm like, man, he sings Frank Sinatra. How many people are listening to that still? If you're singing that stuff, I'm showing up all day, every day. Exactly. It, That's man. why I went on as Dooney Tunes, because I was going to start off. It's New York. Right. You got to think, this is New York. What do you do in New York? Frank Sinatra. Right. Were you afraid at any point, though, like, if you did that, maybe one of your styles might have possibly cut you out? Or were you no, really because I, I didn't go on with the idea that I was going to win the show. All I knew is I needed a bigger stage at that point in my life. Because like what happened was after the band clashed and everything fell apart, I went back to doing my one-man shows throughout the community. Okay. While I was away, somebody kicked in my door and stole all my furniture, my clothes, took the copper out of the wall, all the stuff that I had remodeled from doing construction and everything like that. And that was rock bottom. So I was just like, oh, we, they're going to rob you, me. They're going to rob me. <laughs> <laughs> the only thing for everybody around here, me. And I was mad, bro. I got like super mad. And I was just like, I'm going to rob every drug dealer that comes in the local county. <laughs> and I'm going to get back whatever it, everybody took from me. How much did you get back? I didn't get any. I got way more <laughs> because I took the other path. There was Absolutely. also another path. And then that whole path was right at that moment when I said that, it was like a voice started speaking to me and said, all you need is a bigger stage. Oh, yeah. And I sit back like wiping the tears out of my eyes. Cause like I said, I'm mad. I'm so mad. I'm like crying sitting on the edge of the bed. Like, I can't believe they robbed me. But then it was just like, all you need is a bigger stage. And I said, do you, what? What do you, you think talking? you won in that audition? Like did like when I watched that, and it doesn't matter what level it is—the the first audition, the second, the third, however many levels you had to go through. When I watched that, I'm like, dude, he won. Like this dude. Yeah, the first win. audition changed my whole life. That's all it was. I didn't really care about winning it. I'm glad that I won it. Right. And I'm always gonna be in the you know the America's Got Talent family, and I always mm -hmm. praise these guys. Like they changed my whole life. Simon Cow. Everybody, free mental, free mental studios or whatever it was called, and NBC, all of them, they changed my life. Right. So I'm always going to be grateful for that. But like I said, I never went on there to win. I thought if I can just get on there for 15 seconds, show the world who I am, somebody was going to call me. Did you have an offer? As soon as as soon as that aired, did you have people calling saying, "Hey, we want to hire, we want you to bring you in, we want to hire you"? Oh yeah, you. but you can't because now by this time you done already signed the contract. How much of the million dollar prize you get to take home? Uh, all of it until Sam comes and takes his part. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> all right.
right, so there's another girl right now from Boone County who is like, yeah, no. wowing people. Have you reached out to her, talked to her? Uh, no, 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 I just did a big post for her on my, on my, uh, my uh, accounts, on my social media stuff, man. But I haven't, uh, I haven't reached out to her. I'm just giving her a space. I mean, it was yeah. just like, uh, even when um, Holly Forbes, you know, I, I just took Holly Forbes on my whole Christmas tour with me. Mm-hmm. You know, and that's just the way that I do. I give back, but I stay out of their way until you know whatever happens happens, and then then you reach out. Cause right now they got so much to do. She's got so right. much to do with right now, bro. And y'all really don't understand. It's like a did lie. you watch her sing? Yes, I watched her. I posted her video, everything. Like I seen it. It was great. I just yeah. I still feel like um, I feel like she hasn't opened up as much as she is. Right. Able to because what we just saw was just a glimpse of her mm-hmm. aired shell. Imagine when she kept this shell. Oh, I mean, that's what you're telling us is the exact thing I'm thinking in my mind. Like, I watched him sing Frank Sinatra, he's on here singing gin and juice, right? Frank exactly. Sinatra, I'm, I'm buying that CD, so you got love. See, that's why, well, that's what, exactly. That's why I went on there as Dooney Tunes. I was gonna do all of them, but once they heard me yeah. singing Frank Sinatra, they was like, Can you just do that? And I was like, Okay, whatever, but you're gonna miss out on all this other stuff, like. This is doing to So I noticed from the audition, we were talking about this too. The audition to the different performance. Did they give you the clothing you were gonna wear, or was that you picked it out and then they got they said? Right, no, I picked it out, made them put the lapels on and everything. Nice. I made them do all of that, man. And it was funny because I didn't ever see anybody like really doing that until after I did it. <laughs> so you see what Jay Z and everybody start wearing this stuff like that. That was crazy. Oh, yeah. What's she going on right now, like with timelines? So like they air the fir- so I have no idea about any of this. This is why I'm asking. So like for you, they air the first episode. How long, or are you already done other episodes? But I know the the finale is live, right? So there's got to be a time gap to when people have seen that first episode till you're performing that last time. What is it like in that that time period when people are blowing you up like out of nowhere? And take us through that. Um, first of all, when I auditioned, it was. Uh... It was in like 2010. The audition that you guys saw on TV was April the 1st. It didn't air until May 31st. Okay. Oh and so that whole you got to keep that inside? Yeah, you can't tell nobody what you did. Otherwise, you forfeit your million dollars. So I had to go to New York, do that audition, the, the one, the first screening audition, then come back home and sit there and act like, I don't have this big engagement to go actually audition for a TV show. So then you go back on there and then they do that whole one where you guys saw with the bubble gum right. and everything. Then they send you back home, you sit there and wait until like May. You know, and then May 31st comes around, they air it. And then as soon as the town sees you, then there's cars out in front of your house, people blowing the horns <laughs> in front of your house. They know you. They're like, what? Why did you tell us? You know, but now it's the point where you can actually say it. Now you're like, yeah, I auditioned for that show that was, you know, almost a year ago. But here it is. So you yeah, just went, went back to work. You just you just cared about life. You went auditions over. You know you killed it, but you go back home. Did you just go back to work? Or no, no. At that point in my life, I made a choice. I was like, I'm not working no more. I'm I'm a singer now. I'm an entertainer. Mm-hmm. So I that, mean, because that, when they say that was life changing, that was actually life changing for you then. Yeah, it was life changing, man. It was like a that was a moment where I was like, I'm not working no more. I'm going to do what I love to do. That's my job, man. To do what I love to do. So you and, legit saw the dream and went out and took it. Yeah, because it wasn't even it wasn't even as big as winning a million dollars in my mind. It was just like I could be the love boat guy, the love boat. <laughs> who will be making another run? I could have been that guy, like easily, just because of that first audition. It changed my life. Somebody was going to call my mom, and I would never have to do anything but sing again. And I knew that. Let me ask you this: How incredible is it to just do what you love and, and something that you're passionate about to pay your bills? Because a lot of people would love to do that; they just never can. I think we all can. It's just a lot of people are afraid to take that chance. I'm with you. You're so trapped into the nine to five that you're scared to be like, man, forget this nine to five. What <laughs> going on that? <laughs> you know, but people are scared to do that. So yeah. I just did that. That's exactly what I did. Man, I ain't doing this no more. I'm a singer. 
And that's when I, I had to make that choice, man. And when I did, it changed my life. And it's fantastic because every time I go on stage or I do anything, it's a paid vacation. Wow, that's incredible. So, Think about so that. from America, tell me. <laughs> just so you guys know, we're not paying him for this vacation. This is free. <laughs> he came on. He gave love to the West Virginia guys. We oh, took yeah, the chance yeah. talking. We just jump on him, wanted to talk to you, and reached out. And people are like, "How'd you get him?" I'm like, "Man, we." We got a great guy, Danny, on, on the other line there. He reached out and was like, dude, I'll, I'll see what I can do. So we do appreciate that before we go hey, any further. That's because I West Virginia's – West Virginians take care of West Virginians. We appreciate West it so love. much. Love. So so we get to the point – and it's live, right? The ending of the, ending of the show is live. Did you think you won – I mean, we've already, you already won because you know somebody's calling you. But when the voting comes on, Nick Cannon – probably has the slowest slow roll I've ever seen to announce the winner. <laughs> when we're watching the video, he's like, I'm like, can he read, can Nick Cannon read right now? Does he not know how to say the yeah. name? Did you know at that point you're like, man, I, I won. I mean, no, it, no, no, I didn't. I just knew those little kids were going to beat me just out of cuteness. <laughs> Did you vote for them? <laughs> no, I didn't even vote for myself. Um, like I said, I was just going through the process, man. It was like, God spoke to me in that moment and told me I needed a bigger stage. Here's why I needed a bigger stage. I was at the end of my rope. I had been performing for my friends and family since I was three years old. Mm. So it's basically God has been grooming me this whole time, all the way through the, the blue soul band, the one man shows for the everything. I was already ready for it. I was signing drumsticks for kids in like Boone County Fair, man. <laughs> like, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I was doing these things like years before America's Got Talent. And it's just like, at that moment, it was like I was being stubborn because I was so set in what I was already doing. The guy was like, nope, I'm taking all of this. And now you get to go get what I got set aside for. You got to see it. But the only way I could see it was to get robbed. That was the fire, you lit the flame. Crazy. I jumped up, I cried about it, I went through all the emotions about it, and then I said and thought rationally, like, man. Did you play the drums? You said you were signing drumsticks? Yeah, I mean, I play the drums by ear. I don't like read music or nothing. I can make beats and things like what that. All, what all instruments do you play? There's so much I can under, underneath it. by ear. I can bang on keyboards, make beats, things like that. I'm not, I, I can't read music. I can't <laughs> read music at all. You can sing though. That's all. Yeah, I don't yeah, yeah. I, I got a, I got an ear for sound, so I mean, I know what key to hit without somebody teaching it to me. Like I just, I don't know what that is. A lot of people say that to me in the music industry. Like, how did you know how to sing on that note when no one had told you what the note was? So but basically, now, you answer my question when I when I started. The, we started the podcast. We watched the video. Where did your confidence come from? It you're basically telling me it came from 33 years of just life experience. Just ups and downs and going through it all, man. Being put on the spot all the time. Everybody wants to see you do great things. That's that's the price of it. People always put you on the spot. And like I said, I couldn't see it. And that's the reason you guys saw me cry. When I was crying on TV, it was like all oh, that hit me at once, like, dang. Yeah. And I couldn't see this. I couldn't see this happening. Like I couldn't see it until I was robbed. I hit my lowest point in my life. But when I did that, it motivated me to go on this show. I signed up online. I waited for like two weeks. They sent me a confirmation email and told me to wait on a phone call. Phone call comes in. The woman that I'm with at the time hangs up on them. Mm. They call back. Thank God. They call back. <laughs> Jesus. And I get on the phone and they ask me, what do you, we seen where you want to do an audition. You can do it in several different ways. You can go to, you know, several different states or you can submit a, a video of yourself doing it. And I was like, no, I want to go to New York. And he was like, New York is available. So I saved up all the money at the car wash, went to New York. When I got to New York, I bought those jeans and, um, those shoes, some PF flyers, they look like Chucks. They all black. Yeah, yeah. I bought some of those, and I bought those Levi jeans when I got there. All I had was that corduroy jacket, that rocker wear button up, and a jogger suit that I wore to New York. That's all I had, man. They that's took you took everything. Me. Yeah, that's all I had because they took everything that I had. When they robbed my house, they took all my clothes, everything that I accumulated, like everything. Yeah. And so that's rock bottom. It's like, man, what do you do? What do you do? So luckily I chose the right path. And when I walked out on that stage, 
I put that gum in my mouth because I had a partial that would come out. You know what I'm saying? While I'm talking to you, you'd be like, bleep. You'd be like, oh. <laughs> so I was just like, I used that gum to actually put it in my mouth to hold it in there while I was singing. Wow. So you, know so you said you worked for Jack Whitaker? Yeah, I worked for the Powerball winner, Jack he Whitaker. Won, he won it twice, right? I just remember the three hundred and nineteen million he won. What, uh, did he take care of you when he won? No, I I mean he gave me a job making thirty three dollars an hour. I guess you could say he did. I got yeah. you. So I thirty three dollars an hour, bro. Just flagging and finishing concrete. I have a random question for you. You said you can't read music. I've seen where people who can't read music say they see it in color. You see music in color? No. <laughs> that's crazy. That's crazy stuff, right? <laughs> I mean, that's what I, I've read that so many times. People say they can't read, they, they see it in color. All right, I'm just making sure. Oh, sure man, that's my it's reaction. It's some mushrooms or something. <laughs> uh, yeah, so yeah. At, after, you, after you win, you go to Vegas, right? Yeah, after I win, you know, I go straight to California and I do like TV. I did like every TV show that you could think of, except for David Letterman, Ellen DeGeneres. Uh, Oprah, because like all of those shows are fading out. Right. Who was the coolest? I wanted the the coolest one was probably uh I remember Good Day L.A. or something like that. And the reason it was cool is because they had the wrong information on me. Like the guy came out, he's like, "Hello, where was Good Day L.A.?" <laughs> it was just like. It was the dude. It was actually it was Donald Trump's nephew, a cousin, the one where they was had the conversation on the bus about the grabbing the women and all that. It was that dude. Oh my gosh. <laughs> it was Jeez, that dude. <laughs> oh my gosh. It was that dude. And he had all the wrong information about me. So I, I get out and he got this little cup in front of me sitting there. He's like three, two, one. And they get to talking. Hello, good morning, LA. We had a guest in there. Land now, Eugene Rebels Jr. went over a Mary's Got Talent season six. How's it feel? Has it changed your life? I'm like, yeah, it's great, man. I'm loving it. I want to go to Disney World, blah, blah, blah. <laughs> <laughs> and the dude is like, yes, man. So I got a question for you. How was it, you know, um, fighting addiction? <laughs> oh, shit. <laughs> and I, that's how I looked at him. Like, what? I was like, what are you talking about? He was like, yeah, here it says here, you, you know, you smoke crack. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Oh my what do you say? Did you correct him? Were you like, bro, what? <laughs> oh my God. Oh my God. I'm you, bro. It was so funny, man. But I, I had to keep a straight face. So I looked straight at him like, man, what are you talking about, bro? Like, are you serious? He was like, oh, I'm sorry. Did I say something wrong? I was like, man, I ain't never smoked crack in my life. I'm scared of talking about it. Like, what are you talking about? Oh, oh, he was you have to tell him the whole story then? Yes, I told him the whole story about my life and everything. But he was like, oh, I'm so sorry. It's so embarrassing. He gets up and he drips the car up and he goes in the back. And they got this big argument behind the scenes. I can hear him sitting in the green room. Like, it just it blew everybody away. And they fired the <laughs> in the car. Oh, my God. So you're, so you're doing all these talk shows. I, this is a, a personal yeah. question I want to ask you. Who is, in your mind, the biggest star that you've sang with or that you performed with? Or, or who's the biggest star that you're like, man, that's who I got to get to sing with? Both of those questions. Well, the biggest ones that I performed with would probably be Patti LaBelle. Mm -hmm. That's what I was going to ask. That biggest awesome. biggest yeah. Temptations? And that's crazy, like I said. And itself, everything lined up for me with America's Got Talent and, and the whole robbery. Everything just... It was perfect, bro. I always said that I wanted to sing with Patti LaBelle. And it was because of a Nat King Cole, well, uh, the Motown 25th anniversary special when we first seen Michael Jackson moonwalk. Patti LaBelle was part of that show with Joe Cocker, Billy Preston and all, and they sing Never Walk Alone and all these other gospel songs. And I just remember saying I wanted to sing with her one day. And here I am on America's Got Talent singing with her. Did you get to pick the song? Did you get to pick the song, or she was like, "This is what"? No, we're she picked that song. <laughs> what What would you have picked if it was your choice? 
I don't know, man. It, it would have been something by you know uh, Ella Fitzgerald and Frank Sinatra or something like that. It'd been. I'm gonna, I'm gonna ask you to sing it, so you might as well just start singing it whenever I start asking. I don't know what it would have been. <laughs> I, I really, I really don't know what it. I was thinking if I was gonna pick the song though, it would have been something like that because of what I was already doing on the show. Right. So then you bring in Peg with Bill and we do a duet, and she sings Ella's part and I do Frank's part. That would have been great, but she picked. Um, that song because of that guy had just passed away. No, oh, I got you. Ashbury Simpson, like yeah, yeah, yeah. That's why she picked that song. That's the song that he wrote. So you didn't know the song? I knew the song because I grew up in a Motown house, but I just never actually sung that song, so I didn't actually All know the lyrics. By, oh, you didn't know the lyrics, right? So, uh, so how, said, how long do you got to learn the lyrics before you're performing this? Uh, it's like thirty minutes. 30 minutes. minutes. Yeah. We wow. did that song in like, it was basically like 15 minutes. You know, and they did showed I, did, me on the stage with her, but that was for B-Row. It was just like we were acting like we was doing something. We wasn't even doing anything. Did you mess any of the lyrics up? No. Uh, <laughs> the, the crazy part about it is when I sung my first verse, she was supposed to come out singing when I introduced her. But instead of her coming out singing, she came out giving praise to me. Oh, yeah, baby. Oh, man, now. Hey, hey. <laughs> no, she's going through that whole, she's going through her whole Patty LaBelle thing. And I was like, oh, my gosh, she ain't singing. But she starts singing the verse, actually, in the mm. second part of her verse. You know, she started singing the beginning of it. Oh, my God. So if you watch, if you go back and look at the video real close, you can see a girl in the background with like a curly afro. She's one of the background singers. She's looking at me like, <laughs> and I'm looking at her. I'm looking past Patty and I see, I'm like, okay, I see she on the wrong part. If she don't go to this bridge, this is going to make us all look crazy. Wow. But luckily, you know. I was like, and we <laughs> We couldn't tell, trust me. We, we watched that one on the way up to the week. I'm like, man, that's great. They're doing a great thing, dude. I've watched so much of you in the last couple of days. Dude, the showmanship that you have on stage is insane. Do, do you come up with that before? Is that in person? Like a uh, Just me, man, being me. That's what I love about what I do. I get to actually go on stage and be who I am. Have you ever had a bad show? Uh, no, because I always turn them into great shows. Like, even I if I, get, I love if, that, even if I get into it, like, I had a show. Here's a it was a great example. I had a show at a stud, I mean, 54 Below in Manhattan mm. in New York. When I got there, half of the show had sold out, but the half that sold out was all sitting on one side of the room, right? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So, yeah. imagine you're on the stage and it's split in half. Oh my god. One side is completely empty, the other side is completely full. Oh wow. So when they start the show, I come out I'm like, yeah, what the hell? You know, I just keep on singing and doing my thing. And and while I'm singing to these people over here, I just start singing to the chairs. So the whole <laughs> side like, yeah, they're cracking up. So it's, but they're actually loving the way I'm singing it and they're loving the way I'm doing it. Like it, I just turned it into a great show, man. It's like once it starts, well, you can't control it. Right. You can't control that. I mean, when you try to control it, you're gonna crash. You're gonna look. You're gonna put your foot in your mouth. You're gonna say something stupid or do something stupid that's yeah. out of your head. So whatever happens at my shows, I just let it happen. Like people get up and walk on the stage and barely can walk because they're too drunk. Oh wow! You get up on the stage while they shaking, you shake. <laughs> so, <laughs> if you're feeling it that night, can you go way longer than you're supposed to? Like uh, if you're no. in the zone. Yeah, everything is kind of like through the music unions or, or time restraints on when they got to right. shut down the facility or whatever. Gotcha. Well, you know, a lot of times I, I'll go over, though. I'll go over maybe five, ten minutes, sing like two or three more songs, tell some more stories. Yeah. I mean, but that's that's what Frank Sinatra and that whole Rat Pack was for me. It was like you sing a song, then you tell a story or do a skit or you tell a joke. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? It's always that that goes into the next song. And so I always want to put that in my shows. And it allows me to just be myself. The same way I'm talking to you guys, I talk to my audience. This is how it is. Like, it's nothing. You know, and I have my moments where I hit it with something funny, you know? And then and then it goes to, to the next song. It's just 
I just let it ride. No, absolutely. Hey, so in, right after you won, I don't know if, I'm sure you remember, uh, you sang the national anthem at the WVU game. Yeah. So I was at the game. I was working on staff there, and I remember that. Well, well we just replayed the, the video of it. How hard is it to sing the national anthem with a crowd? I mean, they they were singing as loud as you. And how how did you feel going to Mountaineer Field? Was that was that important to you to come there and do that? Oh, it was very important. I mean, as soon as I won, like Earl Ray Thomas sent the plane to get me. Like the governor wow. sent the plane at that time, and they picked me up and flew me straight from I think it was California straight into the Morgantown. Just me. Me on the, on the plane alone with like you know it was just crazy, and when we landed, the police came and picked me up, and then they escorted me to uh, one of those hotels. And uh, actually, uh, the guy who the stadium is named after was in the hotel. I was, getting ready, I was getting ready to meet him, and he died. Oh man! Yeah, I met his daughter. I met all of them, his grandkids, everybody. I got and, a lot from Morgantown. Yeah, so I was getting ready to meet him, but he died. And um, so then we go into like, well, he died a couple of days later. And then he didn't die like that day, I don't think. But anyway, I couldn't go in there because he was like, he was ill or something, but he ended up dying like maybe, I, don't, I think it was like two days later or something. Mm -hmm. So anyway, I go into the stadium. They put me on like a, a John Deere. <laughs> we go down and I do the, the rehearsal. It's like early in the morning. I go out there and I'm singing. Oh, say can you see by the dawn's early light? You know, I'm doing that whole thing. And next thing you know, I look up and I see a whole lot of people standing there in their pajamas. That was the like, band. And I was also standing there and I watched you do the whole thing. I was on the yeah, side watching you, you. you remember that? Yes, you remember those the girls band. came out there in their pajamas and their onesies? Like, yes. we heard you in our dorms and we heard you. I was like, what? Yep, so the band was out there doing that. I was helping set the field out, and everybody stopped what they were doing because you started this thing, and it was like, what is he doing right now? Yeah. Uh, yeah. It, now, with 60,000 people in the stadium, is that was that your first time in front of – I don't know what Americans Got Talent live. Was that, like, your first live crowd at 60,000? Was that – Yeah, it was, it was a lot of people in there that, that – and I was the, I think that was the most I've ever been in front of. Wow. Besides like the California State Fair. I think that was so the, that people, was the people loved you when you started singing it, oh man. Their gosh. reaction was amazing. But here's the thing, it's not hard to sing with the crowd. The crowd is is great. You need the crowd. Mm -hmm. The the thing about singing in that particular stadium, there's there's like a three second delay. Really? Yeah, so that's why you never hear people sing in that stadium. Only one that's done it is me, Kathy Matea, and I think who? Uh, Brad, Brad, Paisley. Paisley. Brad Paisley did it, but you crushed what he sang. Not that right. he started any beef with you guys, but you were way better than he was in that stadium. It's hard. It's hard. You, you really can't even blame him if he screwed it up. It's very, very hard because, like I said, it's like you can start singing the song. It's like, Oh, say can you see? Oh, say can you see? And it all. It's like everything just keeps coming back at you in like, like two to three seconds. It comes back, bro. So, like, if you watch that video when I did that, they tried to give me ear monitors, everything, and it didn't work. So I pulled it out and just covered my ear up and sung the rest, you know, waving a terrible towel, like. <laughs> well, you see, it covered my ear up because it, it, it was like, throwing me off. And so when the when the crowd started singing it with me, it helped. It actually helped. Yeah. And I was glad that I sung it in a in a tone, and I didn't go over into the. Oh, say can you see? You know, I ain't going to all of that. <laughs> uh, you start Whitney Houston, Houston on us, man. right? If I didn't, nobody would have sung it with me. So I sung it in a way that is very patriotic. That's the only way I sing that song. I sing it to where it's so patriotic that anybody can sing with me. Yeah. That's, so that's any crazy. stadium that I go in, I'm sung for the Lakers. I'm sung for the Miami Heat, the Thunder, wow. the Rangers, the Oilers. Um, the Nationals. I mean, just about everybody out here. I done sung the National Anthem in their places. Do but they the hardest to do that for free or is that appearance fees. fees? No, you get paid for it. You get paid okay. for it. You get all these little perks, stay in the finest hotels. 
Mm. Go to the after parties. I mean, you you get to be on the floor. You get to go shoot the basketball. And oh, nice. The team warming up. You got there shooting with him. I mean, I got patted on the ass by fucking Bobby Knight. Like, no, jeez. By Bobby Knight? That's a pretty good story. Yeah, yeah man. Throw a chair you. I was in Madison Square Garden. I think it was like March Madness or something. And it was like a, it was Duke, um, Kentucky, Marshall, and Bobby Knight's team. That other team. It wasn't Indiana. Indiana. It wasn't Indiana. It was the other team that he had. So they're all like in Madison Square Garden. Was it, uh, Texas Tech. Texas Tech. Yeah. They get ready to have this thing. And I got to do, you know, the national anthem in the halftime show. So, so I was out there, I just do my rehearsal. But before my her rehearsal, I asked them to give me a basketball. So I'm in Madison Square Garden shooting three pointers. Pow, pow, pow. Wait a just, second. That, you're making sound effects like you made it. <laughs> you're knocking them down. Yeah, I'm making them all. Here, here's, okay. the thing. here's the thing. I started, you know how you play around the world? Yeah. Oh, yeah. I was going to do that, but I ended up just going from the front of the rim all the way to the three point line and farther back. So I got all the way to half court before I even like missed the shot. And the whole place is going, oh. <laughs> oh, 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 you know, everybody, this is before the, after the real crowd shows up. It's just like people that's filtering into the, you know, into the place getting ready. And like, I'm hitting these jumpers and the, the teams are coming out to get ready to warm up. Bobby Knight is on the sideline with his team and I'm hitting them. I get all the half court before I step on the line. I make it. But then when I get to half court, I miss. And then it was like, dang. So then everybody starts clapping. I was like, I I made that. So you're holding them off the court. You're like, hold up, team. I'm on a I'm on a hot streak right now. No, they were just they were just watching. So Bobby Knight walks out there and he had heard me sing, do my my uh rehearsal before the shoot. And he was just like, Man, we know you can sing. You sound great, man. Well, but you got a nice three point on you too. And he <laughs> me on the butt. He pat me on the butt, I'm like, good job. And I was just like, dang, that was Bobby Knight. So we saw online earlier, you got your high school diploma in 2020, and that was real important for you to finish that. So yeah. two parts to that. Congratulations, one. Yeah, way to go. And man. then two, now you can get recruited and have a college basketball career. Because apparently you can knock down the three ball all day. You still got eligibility. You got four years. I uh, know, and I can still dunk, and I'm 47. You, you still can, dunk? You can still dunk? Yeah. I, need a, I need video proof of that. How tall are you right now? How, how tall are you? Three, six, three, six, four. Still got ups. I need video proof of the dunk. Like, hey, you're not that far away. Let's get like a like a rec game going somewhere or something. Hey, whenever. Where were y'all play ball at? We'll come I mean, to Lo we'll come to Logan and play come with to you. Logan, we we'll drive down. We're in Logan, Morgan I Town. We could probably honestly, we could probably pull the Coliseum if you come up. We could maybe get a game in the Coliseum on the floor. Where y'all in, in, in Morgan Town? Yeah, yeah, yeah we're, we're in Morgan Town. Yeah, I always I'm always up there near like I mean Cheat Lake. Really. Yeah, my girl okay. lives up there and she lives. So, I, so whenever I, you whenever you want a game, so this is gonna I'm gonna ask you this because you have Danny's information. Are you always this responsive to fan? I mean, he reached out and was like, "Dude, I got a hold of him pretty quick." He, he yeah, out man. Like, I, I thank everybody, man, for reaching out and wanting to hear the story and and just sit down and chat. It's this is like a release for me. You know, a lot of us yeah. in the entertainment world, we're always busy. You're just always gone. So you. You love to be able to talk to people. It's, it's, it gives you a chance to smell the roses. So I thank you, man. And yeah, I reach out a lot. And you know, my um, my girl actually runs all my social media. So as soon as we saw it, you know, she just come to me, and I was like, yeah, let's do it. So that's, that was that's a big, it. Was a big deal for us. Trust oh us, my man. gosh. Yeah, yeah I don't I don't stick out on anybody. I answer everybody. And this is a lot of just people saying, can you you know buy me a four wheeler? Or, <laughs> I my actually do like four wheelers if you're giving away four wheelers. Lines. You think you can pay our mortgage? Hey, my son wants a PS5 for his birthday in a month. I'll hit you up on social media. I want one too. Hey, I got so I got two things. So one, next time you're in Morgantown, we would love to go to dinner. Just go chill out somewhere near Cheat Lake or, or wherever. Just we'll let's all go hang out. If our our treat. Yeah, our treat. We'll take you out to dinner. Yeah, for doors. Yeah, no doors doubt, bro. yeah, I love coming up there. I always go to like the lake house and stuff like that. Oh, it's the best. Yeah. And uh, then our, our second request, and this is probably the most important request we've ever had, uh, you know, just West Virginia boys to West Virginia boys. We would love to end our show every time with Country Roads, but we would love to end it with you singing it. Would you do that for us? Only if y'all sing it with me. Uh, we can't uh, sing. I'll move my mouth, but yeah. we can't sing. I'm going to drop back. Because... Yeah, you said West Virginia boys. Oh, I know all the You're words. Right. I can't right. sing, I man. I know the words. 
I'm watching you sing Gin and Juice and Frank Sinatra, and you're singing with Patti yeah. LaBelle. You want to sing with us? I mean, yeah. I'm actually honored right now. To be honest that, I'm honored for you guys to sing with me. Can you I turn our sing. volume way down so nobody hears us? <laughs> singing. I mean, it's easy. Come on, guys. I'm a boy. West Virginia. Blue is my mountain. No you got to do it, man. We're not good enough singers. Oh, Come yeah, on. It was pretty bad. Can you teach us to sing? Yeah, yeah, let me yeah. ask you that. Do people ask you for lessons? Are they like, hey, teach me to sing, Lando? Yeah, and I think it would be pretty easy. Here's the thing with people that think that they can't sing. Yeah, me. Go ahead. Me. Here's what your problem is. You're trying to sound like that person you're trying to sing the song as. Quit trying to be like them and just be who you are. I got you. I'm with you. I like I mean, the way you sound, though. Imagine this. Imagine this. If you sung a song in your talking voice. And that's yeah, basically yeah. the same thing you do with a Frank Sinatra song. It's like, hi, I love you. You just go, hi, I love you. <laughs> it's the same thing. It's just like it's just like with, with just your talking voice. I mean, listen to this. When Tracy Chapman came out, did you say, oh, that's the greatest singer in the world? No. 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 When Macy Gray came out, he was like, how did she get a record deal? But you know why she did it? It's because she sung it in her own voice. She sung it where she didn't sound like anybody else. All right. On, on, a, on, a, on a real note, before we start practicing, you sing us out with Country Roads. So yeah. we can. Uh, Would you do that for us? So we can add it to the end of the podcast. I don't want to sing with you, though. You got to let me practice a little bit before we start singing. We need you to sing or. You can sing it in Frank Sinatra voice, however you want to sing it. We just yeah, want to man. end our show with you singing Country Roads, man. That would be awesome. If you know All the right. lyrics, you know, you know the lyrics, don't you? Yeah, yeah. I know the lyrics. You guys ready? Yeah. Let me, I don't know if I do know the lyrics. <laughs> I'm going to try it anyway. Let's go. Almost heaven, West Virginia. You rich mountain, shadow or a river. Life was older, older than the trees, younger than the mountains, blowing like a breeze. Country road, take me home to the place I belong, West Virginia. Mountain mama, take me home, country road. Dark wow. and dusty, painted on the sky. It's the taste of moonshine, teardrops in my eye, country road. Yeah, something like that, I think it is. Yeah, <laughs> that's excellent, excellent. Yeah. But I love that song, man, but you got to go here, baby, I'm a star. That's the new song for West Virginia. I'm about to listen to it. We got permission to play it. Virginia. I have a song called Come Home to West Virginia. Let's, let's hear it. I'm calling you. Yes. If you're going to tell me you got a song, I got to hear it. All right. Let me see. It goes, um, Come with me to the Appalachian Mountains where our kids are free to run and play where the water's white. And the fishing is just right Where coal has kept us warm Where our dreams were born In our West Virginia home Don't hesitate Come and see the mountain stay You just might find me Home in Logan County And the green briars near you will almost be in heaven when you hear us cheer. Let's go, mountaineers. Hey. On this warm summer nights, we will lie beneath the starlight. That's where I want to be. Wild, wonderful, and free. Come on home to West Virginia with me. I got to ask you, how much fun do your friends and family have with you every day? Because I'm guessing this is real you. This is, yes. this is the way you, this is crazy, It's just man. like this, man. I'm telling you guys, man, the easiest thing you can do in this world is just be who you are. You're right. Absolutely, man. You hey, can't do anything different. It's just crazy. I just rather, I'd rather just be me. 
Hey, I, I got to be honest. Dude, we, we love you having you on here. We appreciate you reaching out. Like I said, it, it's great when someone's like, hey, man, I'd love to sit down and talk. The next time you're in Morgantown, you got Danny's information. We want to take you into Coliseum. We were just in there a few gotcha. nights ago. We want to shoot some basketball with you in there. Like I said, we'll take you out to eat. We appreciate it. The body loves you. If you want to give a shout out where anybody can follow you, Twitter, whatever you got going on, if you're selling shirts or anything like that, CDs, whatever. Yeah, man, I want to give a shout out to my boy Parker Koncheski because he works with the Coliseum like security. He stands under the rim while he gets to watch all those great basketball games. So shout out yeah. to Parker. <laughs> you. you know, and, um, anything else is uh, you can find me on Instagram, you can find me on Twitter and Facebook, man. And I'm actually getting ready to start doing some TikToks and stuff. So go follow me on TikTok too. Perfect. Absolutely. But, uh, yeah, man. It's just me being me, man. I, I think the world will just love, just loving me for being who I am. Yeah, man. Absolutely. Appreciate you coming on. Enjoy the time in Dubai. That's where you're headed to. Uh, oh, yeah. Back in. Let the body know. Yeah, love to please. have you back on. I got to hear no, I'm Dubai, coming, so man. I'm going to bring Parker with me, too. This dude is Perfect. amazing. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, it actually man. sounds like he's got the hookup to get us on the floor, to be honest with you. Just, yeah, just, probably, just, yeah. He got me into a game like a couple of days ago. Yeah, <laughs> absolutely, man. So appreciate yeah, awesome. it, and uh, we'll be in touch. Yeah, man. All right, guys. Keep You're doing awesome. your thing, man. Peace. Absolutely, Thank you, man. Later.